I bring you my lovely friend Elka Whalen, who some of you may know as Elka Graham. Elka is a faithful mama, wife, Olympic athlete, presenter, entrepreneur, and so much more. Our paths collided two short years ago, and we have been the greatest of friends since. It's such a great honor to be sharing a little bit of Elka with you all today. Don't forget to subscribe if you like what you see, and be sure to head over to the United in Motherhood podcast as we alternate content between YouTube and the podcast each Sunday night. Are we ready? (laughs) Here we are. Boom. We've literally been chatting but this is the first time that I'm asking you questions. Yes. You're usually listening, giving me advice. I'm really excited. So. We can swap it around. So I'm way more comfortable asking, what, what asking did the you, questions. What did you say? Could we do? Yeah, can we flip? So they're already, United in Motherhood is already so huge anyway. No. Here I am taking over that when you're like even more massive, how amazing would it be to hear your story, Annalise's as well, um, of what the past three months have been. But it hasn't just yeah. been your last three it's months, has it? It's been a long time. It's been you and We're doing heart. it already. We're yes, going. It is, it is, it is. There is a podcast coming. Or oh, you would have actually probably heard it. That it sort of tells the background on me and our journey I guess as such but yeah I saw the post um yeah yeah, I love I love how real you are when you're like I'm so scared but I'm going for it I am so scared because I don't share like about I share surface stuff but I feel like no one knows a lot of the stuff that's made me who I am Mm. so that's coming don't get us started on questions (laughs) we're gonna dive all the way back to little child Elka did you like say dive on purpose yep dive like into the pool (laughs) out of the pool first Talk us through, are you, do you have siblings? What was your childhood like? Childhood was amazing. It sounds funny when you talk about it in the past. I'm 37 years young, so I feel like uh, I'm still in my childhood, right? Yeah. You're only as old as what you think you are. It's yeah. just a piece of paper, isn't it? Um, but no, um, amazing childhood. Still an amazing childhood. There's six of us in the fam. Um, I'm crazy. number three. In So, so four... you have the same family. Like you have four kids yes. and you have four kids. Yes. Oh, that's my goal. I'm one of four. Toby, we're going for four. Yes, yes. Going for four. If we're blessed. Yeah, and all I wanted to do was just be as an amazing mother as what my mum has been and still is. So still happily married, 40 years plus, my mum and dad, four children. Goals. We have four children, um, happily married. Um, and childhood was incredible. It yeah. really, really was by the beaches, grew up in northern beaches. And swimming basically started from... Uh, my older brother and sister going down to swim. And so then my mum said, well, I'm dragging Elka along as well. My younger sister, can they can they jump in? And that's how it started. That is so cool. And I heard you say something on social media. You started when you were four, mm-hmm. straight into the, like, learning to swim or was yeah. this, like, squad, like... Well, can you do my mom, <laughs> my mom asked the coach, "Can she, can she jump in and swim?" And he said, "No, she's too young." So I jumped in and swam four hundred meters, eight laps. Stop. And yes, I know. Even now, I think of that. I'm like, "Oh my goodness!" Four. That's hiding in six months. I know because my children didn't do that. So I was like, "Wow!" And um, how about a Vita though? We but, need to get the footage of a Vita. Yeah, yeah. We'll overlay. It. She was a classic. But she loves swimming now. Loves it. But Absolutely hated it. Loves it. Yes, at the start, and, and I had a, a lot of. Um, a lot of mothers at the swim school the first four weeks give me the look of what is this mom doing? Your child is clearly not enjoying it and clearly screaming. But in my head, I was like, you got to break them. Yeah, yeah, you have to break no, them. You've got to throw them. Four week cycle. And yeah. now she, she loves it. She's what she just turned two and she's without a bubble and she's swimming. That is amazing. Mm. Like that is so cool. And I love that about you. Like you, we do have to push our kids sometimes out of those comfort zones to an extent. Yes. To, you know, but I guess people would look at your kids and be like, they should be able to swim. Their mum was an Olympian. Yeah, true. But also with that comes assumptions, which we were just speaking about before, which yeah. is kind of the lowest form of knowledge. Yeah. Being the fact that our eldest, who's now just turned nine, Nevada, um, hated the water. So mm-hmm. the most awkward question, particularly when there's, let's be honest, there's always more questions asked when you have your firstborn. Yep. Um, oh, she must love the water. She must love the water. And we just used to cringe going, yeah, yeah, but no. never liked it. Didn't do it. Was even swimming at three really so it, what took us for a holiday in fiji to have really warm water and thomas was playing with her and throwing her up and down and came back and started on all four bubbles at the age of three and kids were miles ahead of her and in eight weeks she the, the jeans kicked, the jeans <laughs> kicked in the jeans kicked the in, jeans in her but yeah it was yeah it was kind of awkward to answer in those first few years yeah, a hundred percent. Also, because your husband was a water polo player, right? Yes. Yeah, we met at the Olympics, so he went to four Olympics. 
four and he's still involved heavily in water polo right yes he's the president of australian water polo yeah my powerhouse couple i know he, right came, here. He, what are he, we? he did come home and say you know you're going to bed tonight with the president and i said to him ah uh, well yeah don't get any ideas <laughs> like you're thomas to me and daddy to the kids you're still you brought him back down yes. love that yeah he and was mucking around your teenage years what were you like as a teen um, were you just hardcore swimming no, I did lots of different things. Yeah. Netball, um, I had a stint in hockey, uh, and I was never... Sport. Yeah, really yeah. sport orientated. And I wasn't um, magical and breaking records and making finals that swimming. I just loved it. And I think everything really kicked in when the Olympics were announced in Sydney. And I thought, well, this could be the only opportunity ever to, to swim in our own backyard. And it was then that I made the decision and that was 16 I was 16 years I decided right I want to go for it That's and had never made a development team beforehand but that just shows like like this is taking it right back so my dad was a really amazing rugby player love your dad if you're watching don't actually think you watch anything I do but love you um and Phil Kearns to this day says your dad is the best rugby player I've ever seen but the laziest and he was so good at school made like first 15 in year nine and then just kind of got lazy and everyone got better than him yeah and it just shows that it's about dedication and working hard for what you want because like you said you weren't necessarily at the top but you had that in you to get there yeah absolutely exactly what you and Elise are doing now and united in motherhood like you're passionate about it yeah. you have purpose about it and when you combine those two together and you're gifted and and talented in what you do then yeah. you're unstoppable um I, I just love the fact of I'm an extreme extrovert, but also an extreme introvert. Yep. So I love being able to dive into the pool and there's no noise and you can scream in underwater and nobody can hear you and you have your own thoughts and own your time. Space. And I, I'm a really big believer that everybody can do something in life and they do have a gift and a talent. Yep. And it's about finding that. And then when you do, it's one of those things where you can just close your eyes and it's it's easy, it's natural because yeah. it's what you know. And in the pool being 16, I imagine a lot of 16 year olds are going on very different paths. How was that for you? Like, did you struggle socially? Yeah. Did you disconnect or did you connect with other people? Like, yeah, that's a that great like? question. I, at 15 years, I remember ringing my dad, at North, my dad at North Sydney pool and I had gotten 72nd in the 50 freestyle. And all these girls were breaking 30 seconds, which was a big barrier for 50 meters, one lap. Mm -hmm. And that was the biggest lesson my dad taught me. He told me at that moment, and I was crying on the phone, you know, the old pay phones, you're like, dip, 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 dip. Like, <laughs> oh my God, Andy, I know, that, I know. <laughs> and he said, um, Elka, remember this, remember this for life. He's like, don't ever compare yourself to anybody else. That's where they're at now and you'll be different That's if you wanna keep going for it then keep going for it. Don't ever compare yourself to anyone else. And that's where I've added on in the years of saying, we'll be a first rate you and not a second rate someone else. Yeah. Now, in terms of how did that's different paths go. I love that, that's so cool. Oh, yeah. I, um, thank you. I, <laughs> I got you off thought. <laughs> I didn't, I actually didn't go through puberty until I was nearly 17, which is very late. Yeah. I, I sometimes still look and I'm waiting to go through How's puberty. Has she gone through puberty? But, <laughs> when you breastfed, your boobs are huge. Yes, yes, they so, were. And I remember I wore low cut tops and my husband would say, what are you doing? I'm like, I've only got these for a year. I'm gonna enjoy <laughs> that. I'm like, um, that's the best. So I think going through puberty really later on in life um, helped as well. So what did I miss? Of course, there are lots of sacrifices, but to do anything um, great or worthy, there has to be sacrifices. So what did I miss in a nutshell? My year 11 and my year 12 formals. Yeah. Um, I was always the first to be picked up. My curfew was always 10 o'clock, no matter what. Um, and people would laugh at me because, you know, they would sneak in bringing alcohol and I'd turn up with a six pack of chocolate move or solo <laughs> lift. <laughs> So, I love that. Yeah. That's cool. So, um, you were comfortable staying in your own lane? I was, but school wasn't necessarily easy either. Yeah. Like I can't say I've got the fondest memories of school and they I, I'll put that onus on me. I kind of chose um, different groups and different people to associate with when I know they kind of weren't my people. Yeah. So it's amazing. So Which you'll hear in the podcast. Like yeah. Very you, similar. Yeah. And then you, you, you know, we were just speaking before offline and Zoe was just saying that 
you know, you just found in the last 12 months, you know who you are, yeah. you know what your worth is and you won't oh. take any, and you won't take any rubbish. You said it differently. But. Sort of. I think, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it, it, we're all on a journey and there's points yeah. in that journey where you feel so much stronger in who you are and know mm. what you want. And sometimes it takes a long time to get there and sometimes you never get there and that's okay. It's yeah. just, you know, like I said, staying in your lane. There's a lot of swimming references, diving, yeah. lanes. Coming from you, babe. I know, like, what <laughs> am I? Who am I? So your career as such has spanned over a mum, a wife, an Olympian, TV presenter, you're an entrepreneur now, now with Queenhood, which we're gonna get into. I feel like you've had such a plethora of hats that you've worn. When you left the Olympics, what was your like next move? Like, I feel like there's so many athletes that I speak to mm. in my own life. Um, my sister actually dates an Olymp and soon to be Olympian oh. rower and like preparing for life after. Mm. Did you have a, a plan? That's a really great question. And it's, it's, it's one that kind of has a simple answer, but I mean, like anything simple, you can also go complex as well. One of the big things I've always said is with sport, you, you have to be bigger than your arena. So for me, there came a time where I looked and I thought, I mean, I really felt it was God speak to me. And he said, you've got to be bigger than the black line. Yeah. And you have to, because when you're in that bubble the of sport- The black line on the bottom of the pool, by yes, the way. Yeah. When you're in the bubble of sport, whether it be gymnastics, equestrian, athletics, swimming, whatever whatever field it is, you kind of sometimes feel like the whole world is watching when it's actually not like that. Yeah. Um, one of the great pleasures that I had, and I guess blessings, was that um, I was kind of removed from Sydney. So when media, which can be pretty houndful here, um, my boyfriend at the time, now my husband, was competing over in Italy. So I got to live over there. So I had six weeks of not speaking a language and not knowing anyone over there. So I, I could take myself down to the beach every day and say, you know, is this what I want to do? And I, I got to the point where I was like, four days I want to swim and make the next Olympics, but three days I didn't. And yeah. I'd gone to two Olympics and multiple world champs and Commonwealth Pan Games. Pacific, Pan Pacific, I remember watching you. <laughs> and I remember it wasn't until Thomas and I were on ho holidays. And the funniest story, we walked into this hotel room and they'd given us two separate beds, which was kind of funny, but I would always joke with him saying, no ring, no share ring. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, oh yeah, yeah, I Love made, I made him it. wait. Oh, and God, so, yeah. That's um, something I never knew. That could yes. have been the, what we don't know about you. Love and that. so, um, um, we woke up on our separate beds and he looked over to me and he said, are you prepared to be okay with not standing on the dais at the next Olympics, meaning, meaning 2008? And I said, yes, I am. And he goes, well, you've got your answer. And that's when I knew that it was time to move. So I still remember 6th of May, 2004, I did my first live interview with Sunrise. Wow. And it's amazing how we, you were talking before with you and Elise of just how much and how quickly United and Motherhood is growing because Aww, that was my first interview and I, I could have chosen different stations and different ways to do it. But then I've ended up working for them, um, freelancing awesome. for the last kind of 12 years, doing the morning show and then sunrise. So it's amazing how everything works out. So to answer your question, how do you know? Well, you, you've got to be bigger than your sport. And now I realize that God, it was never me. God gave me a gift to be able to swim fast. I loved it. I remember at the age of nine thinking, imagine if I could do this, but this could be a job that I love. And then somehow you get paid for doing it yeah. and so now it set me up for a, a platform of um, of media of speaking and the greatest thing that I probably learned out of it which will probably answer a multiple no, of your, of your questions is um, that discipline creates the maximum amount of freedom yeah. and I found having that discipline in life and now as a mom and a wife and schedules with the kids you should see um, their boards <laughs> they're insane there's so much going on <laughs> so it, it's really taught me from that and yeah. I mean so you've applied what you learn in swimming to your life. Yes, yeah, yep, in sport, in, in certain ways as well. And understanding that to, to get to great heights as well, you also go to great failures and, yep. and great really dark valleys. And then it's having the, the wisdom and the, the right vibe and the right energy to be able to open up to whatever forum that is, whatever person that is, to let them know about the dark valleys. So I even feel like now, 20 years ago, we were all going to women's events, men's events, combined, whatever it was and everyone was getting up on stage like hey I'm Zoe I've got millions of followers and united in motherhood oh, and gosh. but now people don't want to hear that they want to hear about um failures and they want to hear about setbacks because the we, real stuff we want real stuff and yeah. we want authenticity so because I've always been a numbers girl there were 42 times in my international swimming career 
that I went in ranked as number one and I didn't come out or the race just didn't happen the way it planned for n numerous reasons. I was too nervous. I let other things get into my head. And then you have to front the media at goodness knows what time. And then you have to do a drug test where you, I mean, thousands of times we did drug tests where you pants would go down and someone is looking right at the most vulnerable spot in your body, watching you pass urine. And then you oh. have to go give a- It's invasive. A, pr a press conference of, so, you know, you were ranked number one and you've ended up third and 42 times I went back to my hotel room and I just remember I cried. And equally out of those 42 times, sometimes I won those events, but not in the way that I wanted to or not the time I wanted to. And they're the deep, dark, real moments behind closed doors that I think we forget with with everything you're doing now you as well. You were so young too. Like you were young. Yes, but it teaches you to to travel the world and to meet incredible people. Yeah. Um, and to work out straight away, you know, where, where you want your life to go and who and who you want to be around as well. And I think with everything that you're doing, it's so amazing. Oh, but then people have to remember you, that the, the podcast that you're watching now on me, you're going to form an opinion of me and you're going to yeah. form an opinion of Zoe and Elise as well. And I think And you're getting snapshots. Yeah, and I think that's really beautiful is the one thing that I want this to become is this isn't necessarily what I believe in or what you believe mm. in. This is your story. And all you can do is share your story to connect with who's going to connect with you. Because sometimes you hear stories and it shows you what you don't want to do or what you do want to do. Yeah. Or, or who you don't want to be like. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Inspired, empowered, connect, whatever it may be. We just take something from it and it's having enough respect and acceptance of the person that you're listening to to formulate your own opinion in a loving way. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to do. But anyway, mum had on, swimmer had off. Thomas, who made you a mama, you said you met at the Olympics? Mm, we met in Athens, 2004 in a computer block. You were so, so good with numbers, like 42 times, 2000, yeah. six, of, well, like how do you, you're amazing. Oh, I could keep going. I no, I love it. I love learning and I think people grab fast facts and yep. well, that's how I've always been. Um, and I, I speak for a living. So for me, words are delicious and I love, I love consuming books. Can you tell she speaks for a living? It's the best. And I think to be a great communicator, you have to be a, a great listener as well. Because often when you listen to people, you can you can read or pick up on those signs as well. And yeah. um, Thomas, Thomas, we met in 2004 Olympics. Um, there was one spare available computer seat out of everyone. I was actually sitting down to write an email at the time to my boyfriend, who I just met, and I wasn't kind of super keen on him. Boyfriend. Lovely guy. Yeah, if you're watching, so. And um, <laughs> yeah, if you love, if you're watching. Hello, I won't say his name, um, but we're still friends now. And That's um, cool. he said to me, "Are you Elka Graham?" And I said, "Yes, I am." And he said, did you used to play water polo? And I said, yes. And he said, I'm Thomas. I think I met you once in New Zealand. And I was so nervous and embarrassed because he was so good looking and I was really taken back. He's super hot. And so are you though. So, and very good looking children. And they say that sarcasm is the lowest form of wit. So I said to him straight away, I like I clapped back straight away and I said to him, well, I don't remember you. Sorry, I only remember really good people. Good looking, <laughs> good looking people. And he, and because he'd never met me, didn't know my hair and nothing, he kind of was a bit taken back. And then he got up and he left. So that was our first okay. interaction. And so they always say, love at first sight? Well, I, for me, I was pretty blown away. And then we kept seeing each other throughout the village. Yeah. But contrary to what everyone thinks about the Olympics, if you're going there and you're serious, you're not interested in who's the hottest girl yeah. or who's the greatest guy. It's like you're, you're in there because you've trained for four years plus to do the best that you can. Yeah. So it wasn't until we got back that I'd organised for all 500 athletes to come to the cargo bar and have after celebrations. And then I heard Good this old cargo. Tom Whalen was doing it. So somehow I got his number, rung him up and said, hi, I'm Elka, we met at the Olympics, I'm organizing it. And he said, no, I am. And I said, well, I've got a meeting today with them. And he said, well, let's meet up there together. And then I don't know why or how, but I said, and maybe we can do lunch afterwards. Okay, so you... And, and it was organic. He was like, yeah, great. So then we both rocked up. I still remember what we were wearing. We had white, both of us turned up, not knowing each other, both wearing white Havianas, blue jeans and a white t-shirt. <laughs> Love that. We met, the meeting took 10 minutes. So we're like, thanks so much. Here are drink vouchers for you guys. We're so excited. They we're were bringing the Olympians. the Olympians to their place. Let's and then real. we went next door to a restaurant called Malaya, which is no longer there, but it was so good. Their satay sauce is the best. It was so good. Oh, yeah, it. so good. And um, we were there for four hours and we didn't drink and all we did was speak. And everything I thought about him of he knew he was good looking, he was up himself, all this totally washed away. I was like, 
this guy has a heart and he's real and we connected um, and, and bonus <laughs> and bonus he's really good looking so yeah. we um, we had a very long drawn out friendship for so long four months in we hadn't even kissed we were hanging out every day we couldn't even use the word boyfriend or girlfriend and he got a contract because he's one of the best in the world to go play over in Europe and I was with him in the car and he's like oh I'm moving I'm going to to Italy he's like I'm I'm going over there for a few years time and I went okay I still remember I was driving down the spit hill because I'm from the northern beaches in Manly and then he turned and he looked at me and he said to me but we're staying together we're not breaking up so then I just knew oh, that we were boyfriend girlfriend he's the best so yeah four years traveled back and forth 15 times using our own money um, because oh I said to him no ring no sharing and I was just starting to build my media career and I was here and um, that's awesome that you had, like, he respected you enough. He loved you enough to know that you needed your career. Like, I, I love that about yeah, you. Like, and I feel also, like you're each other's biggest support. He became my best friend first. Yeah. And that was the most important thing. Um, I think I said, I love you more on the phone to him than to his face because yeah. we were, so we did long distance for two and a half years. Wow. And then he proposed, yeah, and the male dies. Oh, and then he decided <laughs> to be amazing. And in 2008, he finished his um, double degree of law commerce. He went for the Olympics in 2008 and decided let's get married that year as well. So it was massive. So nine months later, we got married and we've been married 11 years this year. Oh my goodness. And you've got four beautiful babies. Yes. Can I ask? Yes, are yeah. Are you dumbskies? Yes, yeah. yeah. I thought, okay, what are their names and ages? No. Oh yeah, tell us that first. Um, They've got beautiful names. Well, let me go backwards. Totally complete. Yep. Um, have still so much more love to give, but the love that I have for building our family now is full. Yeah. Again, crazy memory, driving through the Harbour Tunnel. I remember talking to Thomas and we were still dating, but very much so cemented in a relationship. We knew, we knew we had a future of how many children do you want? He was, I think, 24 at the time. And he said, I'd love four kids. I mean, what guy at 24 says oh. I want? And I was thinking, me too. And in my wildest, most God knows my inner desire thoughts thought, having two boys and two girls would be incredible. And we never, ever found out what we were having. I love the surprise. Thomas said something to me that stuck with me. He said, there are three genuine surprises in life. The first is being proposed to, the second is finding out you're pregnant, and the third is finding out what, what you have. Yep. And I, I just loved not knowing. That's the surprise of the whole thing. You know, when everyone's like, you're gonna have a girl, you're having a girl, and then you have your baby and you're like, surprise, we it's had a boy. boy. <laughs> so we ended up having two boys and two girls. We have um, Nevada, who's nine, Edison, who's seven, Presley, who's five, and Evita, who's two. And your family is just everything to you, isn't it? They are your everything. So talk us through with Thomas, how you guys balance everything, because you have so much going on in mm. life. You, like well, I you said, can talk, both you and Elise. You've got four babies that you're very involved with. You are very much a present mama with them. You've got an awesome career on TV. You've got your queenhood, which is your entrepreneurial side, which we're gonna get into, I promise. You've got a husband, you've got a family. How do you do it? Is that a question? Can I ask that? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big question and yeah. I think everyone, well, we all have, we all have our normals, yeah. don't we? You've got your normal, I've got my normal, you've got your capacity, which I know is massive. I know about um, that. <laughs> I've, I've got my capacity as yeah. well. So I think I'll answer that really simply. Every morning I wake up and the first prayer I ask is for God to enlarge in my tent yeah. so that my capacity is bigger so I can give more of me and in turn um, connect with more of others. Yep. And queenhood. How did that come about? Can I ask? Yeah. yeah. Shower moment just around the corner down to the hall. <laughs> um, won't need to take you there. Actually, but what is queenhood? For someone watching, yes, what is queenhood? Queenhood is a dream team of women. So we have an online platform where we have four great pillars. That mom for motherhood, she's got the look for style and grace, work it for the lady that also has a career and bust a move for yep. health and fitness. I wanted fun, catchy names, not mm -hmm. like, um, you know, mother like or or health and fitness like those fitness bang mom. words yeah, yeah. so <laughs> bam bust a move and that's where your health and fitness comes up i was in the shower and i'd been thinking of this since 2012. you know um i wanted to create something to bring women together to not only inspire ignite empower all those buzzwords but to keep it real raw authentic hilarious and let them leave, whether it be 5% better or 105% better. And it's 
events. It's a physical. Yes. Yeah, so we've got online. Yeah. We have the online platform that talks about what Queen Hood is. We put all our events on with the videos and the music. And then also once every week, a new article will come out by incredible women. Um, and then with our events, we have, well, Zoe knows because she interviewed our last one. She's it amazing. It. I'll, link, I'll link it up here. And um, we have three speakers and they only speak for 10 or 15 minutes each. And we only ask them three or four questions because I don't want someone coming in who would still do an amazing job and doing a 40 minute keynote speech. Speech, but it could relate to this person but not three rows down another yep. lady so um, they're incredible women um, who have the best of what they're doing in their field as well and we try to mix that up so to answer your question I was actually in the shower and my husband um, had been told from our pastor the night before if you want to be a king don't hang around court gestures oh, I love the story yeah be yeah. around mm -hmm. kings men that are that are brighter and that are better and so I got in the shower and I thought well I want to be around Queens I want to be around people that are smarter than me, that are wiser than me, that can talk about being vulnerable, that can talk about massive failures and how they pick themselves up a bit again. And I thought Queen Hood, well, Hood is a group together collectively and Queens, we are all Queens. Every morning we wake up and we have this invisible crown on our head and we also go to bed at night and it's on as well when we lay down to rest. Yeah. And I think often we, we forget about that because we make a mistake or we, we post something or we do something or so many people make Overanalyze assumptions it. yes yeah. of us and go, no, exactly what you said before. You're like, I know who I am, won't take any rubbish and people can think what they want. And I loved how you said that because <laughs> you, know, you know your worth. Yeah, and we all should. We all are so worthy of everything and more. And I think it's just finding that inside yourself to use your voice to only get the best yeah. um, for you. And the best for everyone is different. And I love that about, you've really taught me that as well, like you without even knowing it. I know that inspired word is a buzzword, but I do love it. You have inspired me to just be better, not just as a woman, but as a mum. So thanks for that. <laughs> but um, we're gonna get into the five quickies with Elka. Are you ready for it? I'm We've ready. kind of answered a few of them, but we'll, we'll just repeat ourselves. Your advice to a mum or a woman who might have a business idea or might be looking for that next step, might have a side hustle or wants to start a side hustle, what's your advice to them to, to do it, I guess? Is it just do it? Live How the, do you just do it? <laughs> live the undistracted life. Yep. Put everything away that is distracting you and simplify what your priorities are. Yep and go for gold, mm. go for gold and believe in yourself. Date night, do you do date night? Yeah, Thomas and I do date night every Friday night. It's oh, beautiful. Oh, I love that. Um, what have been our best ones? We've gone to the movies, we've gone out for dinner. One of my most favorite was actually <laughs> tracksuit pants and active wear and we walked around our area holding hands not pushing prams not saying don't ride too far wait yeah. at the stoplight and it was beautiful we actually got to speak um not being interrupted so it was simple and beautiful and um, we've run bondi to bronte before of course oh, that became that became life. competitive <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's really important. I remember a midwife said to us before we had children was to remember that it's always you two first before yep. children came Which along. Which is the friendship you had even before your Absolutely. relationship. Absolutely. So sleeping bags or swaddles? Well, swaddles up until they're 20 weeks and normally after 20 weeks they go in sleeping bags. Okay. Yeah. Love that. I think you're the first swaddling mum we've had. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Oh, I swaddle tight. Mm, really? Yep. I sucked at it so bad. <laughs> like so bad. Love to dream, save my life, the sleeping bags. And what's next for you? I feel what? like I know this. Oh, yeah. You were More so of the same. Like, I feel like you're on a good... Yeah, well, Queenhood, we're three years in, in September. We've got our 13th event coming up really soon. Uh, we'll have one more event for this year as well in September. Um, and I'm loving everything that I'm doing. I've got some um, traveling and talking overseas. Uh, I'm loving emceeing and speaking for different companies and corporations. But what's more for me? I guess in a real personal, being intentional, absolutely yeah. intentional about who I spend my time with, what Me. I do, <laughs> what, what I do, what I'm saying yes and what I'm saying no to. And I guess finally to answer that is making sure that I'm leaving the best possible legacy I can to my four gorgeous children. Oh, you're like the ultimate mom, ultimate mom. <laughs> no, seriously, no, it's, it's so, I hope that you guys got that from this because you were just the greatest. So... <laughs> Follow her along on social media. You'll love it. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still working out what I'm doing with social media. It's a, it's such a big beast. Follow Queenhood. Because yeah. I feel like that's the best of you. You share a lot on there, not just about you, but also about your business. And this is a business-focused sort of mama tribe yeah. for this month. 
So yeah, go and check it out there. But um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, the beautiful. The beautiful Elka. <laughs> love you guys. <laughs> thank you so much. So that was the lovely Elka. She really is such a top chick. Be sure to subscribe to our channel if you like what you see and head on over to the United in Motherhood podcast. See the link below. I'll be in your ears on the podcast next Sunday night at 7pm and back here on YouTube in two weeks. See you soon, mamas.